Without Blaze of Glory, he's not going to get War Elephant. And when he does get rid of it, we can play our other card. Interesting. So we get the plus eight here. Do this. And then we just discard this, but it doesn't matter. We're up by 62. We're going to be playing Siege today. It's going to play yesterday, but then the patch notes came out and we saw all the changes that were going to happen. So I figured we'd try Siege and finally be playing it in stockpile. Usually I play Siege with Inspired Zeal because you've access to the really powerful cards in Prince on Sace and your Selkirk to use with the Inspired Zeal and Rafar's Vengeance, which all pretty much need Zeal to be usable. So that's why you should play Inspired Zeal. But with the changes to the resupply, and all the cooldown cards, I thought it'd be time to finally make a stockpile deck. So let's get into it here. We have Crystal Skull. I like Crystal Skull here because we have several cards we want to protect. And usually we want to get something... We want two long rounds, essentially, for this deck. And short words, rounds aren't great. Inspired Zeal has a significant advantage there, in my opinion. Because you have something like the duels you can save for a short round with the Zeals. We don't really have that here. We do have, though, the normal Siege, Anthropus Assault, and King Consult. And then, obviously, this is the main core of the deck, then you have War Elephant. The reason I wanted to go with War Elephant is just because I don't really use War Elephant, and as a power card finisher, it's actually pretty good. The order with the uh, boost gives you 16, since we're not going to be playing this without soldiers next to it. So that's pretty good. And then we could potentially reset that cooldown. Well, not reset it, but reduce it and use it again, especially if we can use this next card, King Radovid. So we have stockpile with our three charges. Theoretically, potentially, you can get up to five charges, use King Radovid adds a charge, and then you use another one, your his order, and get another charge. You can have five charges here, which will really help if you get a long round set up, especially round three. If you have a bunch of charges and stockpile set up, you can really start reducing cooldowns and really exploiting all these orders, which is what we want to try and do. Voltus Pride got resupply. Voltus Pride I thought was already pretty good, and this helps it even more, so we really like Voltus Pride. Should be a really strong card in our deck. And ideally, you want to use Siege to win round one round, and we want to use some combination of our other engines. So either King Henselt set up on Voltus Pride, because that's usually the target we want to go for, or King Henselt on War Elephant, and that setup should give us a really strong round at some point. So something like that for the other round. We have John Natalius, War Chariot. War Chariot's resupply is nice. Uh, this also gives us a bit of control and movement. So if something's row locked, we could potentially deal it this way and move it out of the way for Margarita. I think you really want Margarita for the lock. Uh, usually people are playing interesting stuff and the patch just comes out. There are two Carrick Frigates. Uh, Carrick Frigate with resupply, it's just better, which is probably good. Um, yeah, so we could probably exploit a lot of things here. The thing with the Carrick Frigate is if you have the cooldown with the crew, you could potentially just use Stockpile, right? And just spam out a whole bunch of guys. So you could make like a Swarm deck based on this with um, the... What's his name? Where is he? This, uh, this guy, Voimir. I'm going to boost all the copies, so you could do that. You could use these chargers to spam out a bunch of the volunteers, and then with the frigates, if they have the crew, and then you could boost them all. Interesting idea. Not what we're going for here, but thought I'd mention it. Two boiling oils. I, I could run one. Honestly, the truth was I was running one boiling oil in a bombardment with a uh, siege tower. <laughs> but siege tower... Got from four to five provisions. I missed that part of its change. I saw its changes. I missed the provision change from five to four. So an extra one, I bumped the bombardment to a boiling oil. Two Carol Blistas. I like Carol Blista. We're going with all the resupply stuff, seeing how it works out. And I kept it in the deck because of that. Reinforced Ballista. Obviously still very strong. The two winches. You could go with one winch. There's a lot of, unlike a lot of decks here, you actually have a lot of decisions to make in four provisions. And it's not easy. Because you have stuff like Bombardment, which synergizes very well with the Siege Engines. You have stuff like um, the new Siege Towers of 4. So that's at least a 1 point per turn engine, which isn't bad. And it's a Siege, so it helps you out. And you definitely want to be running the new Siege Master, I think. When you play a Siege Machine, Siege Engine, you summon this from your hand. It's a right of it and draw a card. It helps set up crew. It helps thin your deck. It gives you more points. It's really good. So you want to run this. And then you want to run the Centurion Envoys, because you really, really need Siege. And Envoy is really the only way you have to search for it while well, staying in Devotion. But in Devotion, the only reason you usually play Devotion is for this guy, the Carrick Marine. 
Now, I didn't find a spot for the Carrick Marine. You could cut winch for him if you want to. You could cut siege support. I like the siege support. And this cooldown reduction usually comes in handy at some point. Probably the siege tower should be a Carrick Marine and potentially the siege support. But I wanted to try this out first and at least give the new changes a bit of a bit of a shot here. So you really don't have to play Devotion if you're not running Carrick Marine. So that's an interesting point to make. However, if you're not playing Devotion, like we're not playing any of these, you're allowed to play neutrals, and then you can make cut changes to the upper right. King Radovid's slot here is a 10, so this could be your Heat Wave. If you want to run Heat Wave, this could be Heat Wave here. It'll probably catch people off guard because they won't expect you to be playing it. They usually expect Devotion from the Northern Realms. And you can also play the new Vigo's Muzzle that can lock a, and seize a 6, which is very powerful. And that's something we have to watch out for ourselves. So yeah, you could run this as non-Devotion, but we don't actually have any Devotion payoff. Mostly we're just going to be running this Siege Tower instead of where I put the Carrick Marines here and probably maybe one Siege Master, or probably a second a Winch or a Siege Tower would probably be a Carrick Marine normally. I want to try this out and see how the new stuff plays out. So that'll be it for this one and let's get some games. Hopefully this works out pretty well. Overwhelming Hunger. Okay, Monsters got no changes in this patch at all, so... Probably still Vi or probably still the Arrakis Queen stuff. And based on this, it's probably the Arrakis Queen stuff. So we want to be careful because we're going to lose a bunch of stuff to getting seized. So we don't want anything too strong right away. His hand is very bronze heavy. So against Vi, you want to keep the boiling oils. But I don't think it's Vi, so we can get rid of one. And Siege Support gives Zeal. Nothing here really needs the Zeal, so I think we'll put him back for now. Okay, this, this hand is kind of ridiculous, honestly. <laughs> We're missing every gold card in our deck except for pencil. This round's not going to go well. I don't think we can win it, essentially. However, <clears throat> what we can do is still try to win it. Uh, Carol Ballista at least doesn't get seized by Maruna, so that's potentially a start. But this bad a hand, I really want the Centered Envoy stacking. So uh, I predict this will probably get Marooned. I'd rather have Marooned this than something like Carrick Frigate. Okay. Here we go. It's going to be one of these decks. Probably Witch's Sabbath of some sort. Two choices. We could go for King Hensel. Or we can try and win the round the Sabbath. I think we'll set up a Carol Ballista here. If we can set up some sort of damage things, we could probably blast through this guy eventually. We have a boiling oil and a lot of our stuff does damage. Yeah, this is what we expected. The other thing we can do is if we play our War Elephant, his... Which is Sabbath brings it back, and that's pretty good. So I think we'll actually try and use War Elephant twice here. And that would be nice. This, I think we hit this to just reduce the armor a bit. We go for Henselt. These decks usually don't have removal. So if we go Henselt into War Elephant, they'll probably live. And then that way we can play a soldier next turn and click the War Elephant ability. Let's do that. We could have also gone for the control type stuff with our War Chariot, but I want to try and pressure him with a lot of points here, because War Elephant coming back is really good. These decks do sometimes play the Graveyard Banish, like Xavier. Let's see, Rackus Queen. Knew that was coming. He's going to bring back a bunch of these. And there's those. So we can't win this round at this point. Once those transform, he'll get too many points a turn. He'll be like 8 points a turn. And there they are. So at this point, potentially we can't win this round. So then he brings back, we get these three back. The thing is, eight points a turn is a lot. And we're down by 24. I don't think we could, if we play three cards, we can't beat this. I was kind of hoping he didn't have the um, 
rack is clean. But he did. But the reason we played the War Elephant here is because our biggest difficulty is going to be in the turn where he plays all of his um, stuff for a big, big swing and then he starts getting engine value. Now we have the War Elephant coming back for that. We don't have to play it out of our hand. I'll play faster, more tempo. Hopefully it gives us a chance to keep up. Also, hopefully we draw Siege, but we didn't. So Winch will be nice, but probably not the best card here. This is probably useless, Boiling Oil. So is this. But we need it this round, the Siege. Mm, that's annoying. How we deal with this then? There's the Maruna. It's fine. Uh, frigate. Not really what we want to do. We could go for our boiling oil or amphibious assault here. Probably, if we go for amphibious assault, we can lock this, but then we lose the ability to lock one of the Gurnicoras. And he's going to have one, two, three. Potentially. I think we do go for that, though, because this round's really important. And he's going to have Defender, so we can't lock those other guys anyway. Hopefully we can get the King Radovid for our charges. That'll help us. This will be Witch's Sabbath, probably. There it is. Now we don't really have damage here. We can move some stuff with War Chariot. That's fine and all. Really though, if we can kill these uh, Gurnicor's fruits, we should be okay. And we won't click on our War Elephant yet because that won't be very helpful. But we do have these reinforced blisters to help out here. He does only have the one Yurnicor's fruit, which is good. For our War Elephant, we do need another Soldier or two. Okay, he's just going to be done with this round. That's fine. I think. He might be playing a no unit deck. Go Radovid, we could get a charge, but that won't really help that much. I'm trying to think of what card we want to get rid of most. This gains Vitality. No boost, no boost, no boost, because we killed those off. So this would be a 4. 5, that does do it. Okay, if he's playing War Ele if he's playing the play which is Sabbath 3 times deck, we still do get back our... War Elephant, but War Elephant really here did what we needed it to. We didn't get any value from it, but I think it just deterred him from keeping going here. He's used a lot of his provisions now. The thing is, we still need Siege. Really badly. I don't necessarily want two frigates. Winch is okay, but probably not the best card. That is a pretty good card. He has no Defender anymore, so this might be useful. But he's also playing Death Wish, but if there's no unit, this might be helpful to get a turn of not playing something. I think I'd rather have Reinforced Blista than Kara Blista, but let's do this. We go first. Lovely. Um, our best option here is to Amphibious Assault out our... Well, he's in, in Manticore, so we're not going to do this right away. We want the Centurion Envoy to stack the Siege so our Siege Master can pull it from our deck. So that means we open with King Radovid. The reason we do this is I want him, if he's playing Imperial Manticore, I want it gone. And this is a good target for him to Manticore. And we can't play the Siege Master because we need this in our hand for when we stack. Because if we play a Siege Engine, this will come out. So we need to hold on to this until we've stacked the Siege. Because we really need Siege to win this game, I think. Yeah, this is a three-round deck. 
We do, do get our war elephant again. The beast assault. Now we need to put siege on top. There it is. We play a siege engine, we get to draw that, and that's really key here. And we have the five charges, so if we put a whole bunch of siege engines in a row, we'll have a ton of damage coming out. Mm hmm there it is. To get the defender back. It's a bit annoying. Bit annoying. We want to make use of War Elephant here, for sure. It's going to be kind of hard to do, though. So we want to play this. We want a soldier. So we need the crew. This does give us a soldier. The lock's not very useful here. War Elephant not getting us a ton of value, actually. A bit annoying. We have to play a Siege Engine, though. So we'll go. He is a soldier. We'll put this frigate here. Very nice, we have our Siege, and hopefully that Siege can carry this game. We do not want to overswarm, though. Let's be careful of that. Prentice, yep. Engine time, boys. Engine time. Really annoyed we can't use this War Elephant better. Still our Siege Master, I don't care. Now, we do want to kill these off, but we can't very easily do that, which is annoying. So, this is our Siege turn. Click on this. We get, I don't really want to make much stuff with Carrick Frigate, so we're going to go with the cooldown 2 instead of the crew. Because we need room for 1, 2, 3. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units at least that we have in our Frigate, so I'm not really concerned about this. We... Would run out of space pretty fast. <laughs> There's the beast. Then I do want to move something. We'll move this. Now we'll lock beast or Gurnacora. It's pretty similar. Probably beast. Doesn't really matter what we pick there. I need to kill it. Whatever. We definitely want crew on Foltis Pride, which is gonna be pretty hard to get unless we just go for the stockpile here. Our Foltis Pride. Well, that's pretty convenient. We can kill both of these. And, yeah, like I said, we don't want to use these character frigate orders a lot. It obviously made it more awkward with our chariot. We didn't like, have crew on this, stuff like that, but we need to fit all of our units. He removes the lock. We can move. That's not great. We don't really want to do that. We want to kill the beast. Not going to be an easy way to do that. Just start working on it, I guess. Okay, we got Fultus Pride. And we can kill the beast. That stops that engine going, which is nice. We need room for these guys. Okay, we got a bit of control there. Yeah, like I said, we really want two long rounds with this deck. And they're not really getting that. Which is why this round's so awkward, right? Normally this round would not be this awkward. I guess we throw this down. 
This, this round would normally not be so awkward, right? We have so many units that we couldn't really use our abilities very effectively. There is that death wish. No Arrakis Queen for him. And yeah, that's GG. Not the perfect game, but we were good enough to win. Game two. Hopefully this time we can play more of our ideal strategy and not really worry so much about having not enough room on our rows. It was really King Radovid giving us those five charges. Interesting. We had a lot of spare units, right? We couldn't click care, frigates, stuff like that, but this game we should try and... Well, we are going to try and do this better. We're going to try and push with War Elephant, I think, if we have Karak Frigates that live. This is going to probably live. We've got two Karo Ballistas. Siege Master thins our deck. Put this back. Winch is helpful for these for four damage in a turn. Uh, we do definitely want this Boiling Oil for Nature's Gift. Put this guy back, I think. Henselt's a really good card here. Really good. Okay. That's going to get boosted. Now we can hence out Fultus Pride for a big push this round. Or we can start a little slower with Karak Frigate and go for War Elephant. I want to try that approach. He's probably going to die here. But whatever. Draw a Siege, which is really nice. I had to get that weird setup to get it last game. But we did need it to win that. Is this full symbiosis? Be interesting if it is. Uh-huh. Naturally, that's the card he gets. And, of course. Why, why would I think he'd get anything else? This interaction, by the way, is so unlikely nowadays that I'm kind of annoyed, actually. But I guess we... It forces us to kill this. Like, we don't have a choice that has to get killed. Otherwise, we could get this guy's crew going and set up something. Bit annoying, honestly. Kills off our Siege Master. Oh well. Let's see what this is. Probably Nature's Rebuke. And there goes our Frigate. Oh, we're down by 19, so it looks like we will not be playing. He's going to bleed round two, so that's not too bad. We'll just throw down a Pacaro Ballista. He's going to play a card, then bleed round two, and round two. I think we try and hold Siege round 3. That's really greedy, but I think we have to. Then round 2, we go for a long round with Henselt, War Elephant, and all that good stuff. Our long round should be quite good without needing the Siege. Because there's no way we're winning this round, right? This is the standard Nature's Gift stuff. Obviously standard in the fact that his uh, Sorceress at 9 gives him a... Bountiful Harvest and the Bountiful Harvest gives him another Sorceress, messing up our whole strategy, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Answer's nothing, we just go to round two. But the good thing is these people usually play long round twos to bleed you, and our long round two should be quite strong. Voltus Pride will be a key card in it. He's almost certainly running Devotion for... Wrath of Broccolon, unless these decks have changed more than I'm aware of. Actually, I think, so as far as crew, we actually uh, don't really have much. I think we put back War Elephant to play with Henselt. That's a good choice. Winch, Carol Ballista, Reinforce Ballista. I'll put Winch back too. So if he starts pushing, we go like this. We'll go Henselt, War Elephant. And that should pretty much discourage him from doing too much. We're going to do it ranged, or melee, so we can put the John Natalius next to it as well. That seems like the plan. This is obviously a very big commitment. But if we don't do this, he's going to take this round probably, and I would want to just want to hold Siege for round 3. I think Siege is more valuable to have than these. if he's not playing Devotion, we'll find it out now on a Heat Wave. It's going to be Rebuke. That's fine. John Natalia is going to set up both soldiers eventually. So, we do have our... Reduce a cooldown. John Natalia plays something. 
We've got this. Let's go with Thieves Assault. And we're going to play out our Siege Support. The cooldown's not going to help out much. But it will give us a setup for our... Uh -oh. This guy coming up. We'll go to John, John Talius next to him. And I'll give the boost 8. And then that should be the good for this round. It should be on even then. Or uh, try and be ahead, I mean. So yeah, we can do our boiling oil, remove that. That's probably good. John Italius. The boiling oil. We remove this. Do our 8 boost. And now we're head ahead. And let's see what he has. We probably won't stay ahead. Because we aren't without using this stockpile. But I don't mind really using a stockpile here. If we go for a stockpile. We can set up another crew is what I'm thinking. Then we can use... This bleeding and movement. The movement actually is not too important. We don't really need it. So I think we'll just go for the bleeding four. That'll stop all these point gains. And he's going to have to give it another, um, what's it called? Dryad's caress thingy. Okay, so we want King Radovid still. I think this might be the turn for a Sintran Envoy. Seems pretty good. We could also set up our Frigate, or a Caraballista. We'll go for this. We want to find King Radovid to round 3. And if he ever does anything a little more pushy, we can just go for a stockpile. That'd be pretty good. Get our cooldowns reduced. Looking pretty good so far, I'd say. We just want to hold Siege for round 3. This might be a big play. It's just going to be a movement. It'll probably move something out of its crew. Probably War Elephant. That'd be the smart choice, just to move War Elephant. But he might want to move the War Chariot as well, because then we don't get the bleeding. Honestly, War Elephant's better. Moving one of the soldiers is really risky, because he doesn't know that we aren't holding one. It'll work out well for him if he does, but it will just be because he's lucky and didn't predict what was in our hand very well. Yeah, so he got lucky there. Interesting choice. I disagree with it, but he will get it to work. Um, we will do get a couple points there. But the nice thing is now we can set up crew in the range row if we need it using this frigate. Set this frigate up. Now, we do need a couple points, but that's pretty simple here. We just go like this. I don't mind using one charge here. Plus it lets us check our deck. There's King Radovid, that's what we wanted. Now we get this thing bleeding again. And we move it. We could have used this zeal, but I want to hold on to it. The reason I want to hold on to it is for like threat. I would have threatened having this zeal. The land Javel for that. That's a good play by him. It helps him out quite a bit. We're down by a significant margin now. Go for this. And we don't have to win on even if we have two siege engines. I think what we do... We could go Foltus Pride. But then we don't have the thing on it. We could go for this. Foltus Pride is probably a really strong card to be playing here. We know we're drawing Radovid, so I'm not worried too much about charges. So what we will do, I think, just go for this. Yeah, have Foltus Pride. That's probably the second best card. Around, we have Radovid on top. I meant we go for this. He does get two points, but this gives us two points. It does kill our one card, but overall it gives us points, so we'll do that. It does play into Tall Removal, but if he's got points into Philandrill, he probably doesn't have any. Provisions, I mean. And then next turn we've got bleeding we can put out. We can do this again. Not looking bad. Leader charge expected. We still watch out. This is Gord. If that's Gord. We could be in a bit of trouble. We will do this. 
Uh, we'll make a guy. We'll make the Cara Ballista because it plays for more. And now it's when we use our zeal. Let's see if he plays his gourd. Does. Okay, so can we win without playing Siege? We're going to draw a Radovid. We have two Siege engines left in our deck. So this plays for... This does four damage. He's gaining zero points. So this does four. We're definitely doing this. This gives us two. This plays melee for four... Plus we can leader it. Four. This reduces the cooldown, so five. And we get the two from the volunteer. That should be good. No, I don't want to click that. I want to click this. Alright, now we have Siege round 3, he's used up his Gourd finisher, the long round really did very well there, other than the fact he moved, or War Elephant, um, we do have maybe a little bit of shortage of Soul Truth, I'll have to check into that, but right now we should have, yeah, we knew we were drawing these 3 cards, I think I'd rather have a Siege Engine than Margarita at this point actually, there we go, and we should be fine here, get a charge back, Elven Seer, just play this, get a charge, we should have too many points unless he's playing Samaz double orb or something, I, I think we got this pretty well, okay, that's fine, we want to pull out Siege Tower, because it gets Vitality too. And then this should finish everything off pretty easily. It doesn't really matter what his last card is. Unless he skipped into Hearthstone and got a Deathwing. Because otherwise we're going to win this. What's his last card? Rebuke. And we're good here. I'll do it. We don't need these two charges or this order, but we had an additional seven points there that we didn't need to use. So that's pretty good. GG. I wonder what we'll be going up against this time. Similar. This is probably the standard meta deck from last season. Quite annoying deck, honestly. Let's just make sure we don't get... We have to watch out for Siege getting stolen. We're going first, so it'll probably pressure us. We do have two Siege Masters, which could help out. And then, I don't think we need Winch, necessarily. Or you... King Radovid could be a good choice to go with. Now we have one Siege Machine, two Siege Machines. This sets them up. Yeah, I'll take this hand. This looks pretty good. And we'll go for our Cairo Ballista... I'm also curious if these will both trigger. Let's find out. Okay, that's what I expected to happen. And we'll give this a boost. <clears throat> now we have our setup there for crew. Let's see what he's got. There's the Blight Maker, we knew it was coming. Obviously, they always have it. Uh, let's fire this. We could potentially go for a Radovid set up now. As he also applies to the crew. Or we can go for a stacking with Envoy. Let's stack with Envoy. 
So you really need to find... I was saying, we need to really find Carrick Frigate. Carrick Frigate's the card that really sets up all these crews. The crews aren't super important, except for the uh, War Elephant. So he's going to stack his deck here. So we definitely want to win this round so we can bleed round two. If we don't bleed round two, his round three will be every gold card in his deck, essentially. We don't want to deal with that. So we need a crew. We can play Radovid. Let's play Radovid, and then we'll go War Elephant, potentially. Wouldn't be bad. Let's do that. If he steals War Elephant, though, it could be annoying. It's to beware of the invocation. We'll just play the elephant and save its order for last play. Let's go rid of it. These um, charges, at the very least, will be very will be helpful later on, and this might make him invocation. We'll see. He might also be playing the new Vigo's mu muzzle. You never know. There's something we have to be aware of. Okay, that doesn't do anything for him. Nothing really, at least. And actually, we'll be using this boiling oil here. Don't want him getting any engine value going. And that was our resupply, so we'll start shooting Sean Calvite. Yeah, he can't actually use the ability of Radovid unless he's playing Ana Henrietta, which is not a normal card they run, in my experience. See what he makes. Hopefully nothing too crazy. If we go too much further, we'll have to siege Henselt or War Elephant. Like one of them will have to get played. And in a long round, I think Henselt Voltus Pride's better. This is gonna be the two with Death Blow. We can remove our crew. Let's say because we could play War Elephant here. I think War Elephant is the choice, because we can always use a stockpile charge to get a, a soldier on its right. And this could force out the invocation. He probably don't, won't get enough soldiers to play this with the order himself. We do lose our Ballista, or our um, Sentry Envoy. So we will use a charge here. Oh, we have to play a card still, obviously. We'll go with this one. We've been playing on the left, so if he kills off our two-point soldier, we can play another one with Stockpile and have our crew back if we need it. I think without Invocation, though, we should have this round. With Invocation, it gets a lot closer. So we go down to 19. Brothens. Okay, this could mess up our crews. He chooses not to mess up our crews. Questionable. I would have locked or messed up the crews. That's also not the way you mess up the crews, my friend. Uh, I guess we we have a lock. Locks are not great against his engines. So I really don't mind using it here. We can lock the Brothens. It's probably the most efficient use of it. Because the other engines we have to worry about are, have Veil in the Mage Torturers. So that's not really helpful. And if he's bent on killing a soldier on the right, that doesn't actually stop us from getting crew on our War Elephant. Because we can just use Stockpile again. His life would have been much, much easier if he put the uh, Duchess Informant between our crews instead of this. That being said, we do get an extra 3 points from killing the Informant. So it's not ideal in that way. And Radovid is not useful to him. It's a six-point card. He does stop the crew, but like we don't have it ready anyway. So, whatever. Fire this. I guess we play another one. We're down 17. Next turn, we have to Henselt or Siege if he goes for it. Unfortunately for us, that's not what we want to do. If we use a leader charge here, we get an extra 2, 3, 
for five points. Let's see what he does, though. I want to hold on to Hensel. I'm not sure he's going to keep pushing. Because Radovan was just a six-point play. Okay, Henselt's dead, and Siege is probably not great for him. If he has more spine cards, it could work. Or more copying cards, it could work. But he's not guaranteed to have enough. He's played Bribery and Brothens already, so he has to be holding Duchess's informants. And if he is holding them, I think he would have already used them on these catapults, or uh, trebuchets. So I don't think he can use Siege. Maybe he's got the play from our graveyard. That could maybe work. Maybe. We don't have a siege machine, though. Or a siege engine in our graveyard. He's used his leader, so I don't really mind giving up the Henselt here. I normally wouldn't want to, but I don't really mind. Let's get rid of this. We've got our Henselt. I want to go for a crew that's not amazing. Like, Foltis Pride's a really good card that I would not like to use. We could play Siege Tower, but that's like a low value. We get a little risky there. But I think we will. Go for Caraballista. It's not great either, though. i just play this. We are going to use this because I'm definitely not playing Siege. We're definitely not playing Siege. So that gave us one, two, three, four, five, six extra points. Okay, he got rid of Henselt. That's fine. He has no leader, and we have the last, say, round three. So that should be helpful. We do have to watch out for Invocation. Sometimes these people play Invocation. But we should just go for a longer round three here. Or we can try and bleed out some more cards, because these are all going to be his gold cards he just drew. Interesting hand. Uh, we do want Amphibious Assault and such. So I think I'll put back a Frigate. Or War Triad. Put back Frigate, I guess. There's Foltis Pride. I want this to give us crew. We'll just go for the round three, I think. If this was, um, if we got into either Amphibious Assault or John Natalius there, we go for the round two push. Because he's going to have his, what's it called, Artois and stuff. He has the Mushy Truffle for carryover. If we just push, we don't have enough soldiers, I don't think. We might have been able to go for it. But our long round should be good. Just have to watch out for the heat wave. There's the John Natalius we're looking for. And as for, that's a lot of Siege Machines, I'm going to be honest. We don't need this card. Now, if we look in our deck, we pull out the Amphibious Assault. If we draw the Amphibious Assault, it's not bad. Those all None of those cards are really bad to draw. And we don't need his Zeal, so we'll draw again. And it's not bad to draw. We have to watch out for the Illusionists and all that good stuff, but we have a long round that's pretty good of our own. And hopefully Fultus Pride does work for us here. So he's gonna if he ha he has invocation, so we can either invocation our Carrick Frigate. So then we play with Assault. It'll probably be the Caraballista. Or it'll probably be an invocation onto the Fultus Pride. So we'll play it later in the round. Let's see what he goes for. Probably some kind of illusionist or something. Casting contest or a plus five. Okay. Um, the reason to frigate or siege before frigate? I don't think so. I think we go frigate first. I'm gonna put them range so the uh, what's it called? Carol Bliss that we're gonna play goes there. Let's see what he gets. Okay, that's not too bad. 
We do have John for Natalius for boiling oil still, since we drew our Davis Assault. So here we go for the frigate. I think we just play the second frigate, right? I mean, is there reason not to? I don't think so. <clears throat> we can use his guy for a soldier now. The crew on the ranged frigate's gonna be a little harder to get, but that's fine. Okay, it's expected. So I think now he has this nice ranged up. I think now is a good time to play the siege. He most likely has an answer to it, but that's fine. Now we can get a couple turns from this Foltis Pride, and that should be decent at least. He still has, he still has Brothens, but he doesn't take anything amazing. Or not Brothens, what's his name? Artois. Okay, that's fine. Choices Foltis, Pride, or War Chariot. War Chariot. They're both good. I think our finisher will probably end up being maybe a siege support for cooldown reduction on Foltis Pride. That's probably the best choice. So we have to want to know when we want to play John for his boiling oil. Not yet, I think. So we'll go with the War Chariot. And we'll move this so it stops getting its ability and it gets the bleeding. Let's see what he has here. This bombardment will be very big, which is the reason we held off on Siege a couple turns. We can get a couple out. This will probably be rad of it. Let's move off the Carrick Frigate. Okay, that's the thing we want to boiling oil, but he's going to boost it. It's fine. Um, we could do our turn for Foltus Pride now. We have space for another unit in our melee row. Alternatively, you can go for our Amphibious Assault on a Caro Ballista. I don't mind that actually. Let's let's do that. It's a lot of damage. Then we can go for four more damage in a movement. Or four more bleeding. We'll pick him. Move this back to the range. Spawn of guys. Now we need room for units still, so I'm not gonna click this one. We still need space. And he might have more spying units. So we can't play too many things. I'm really glad that was not on Joachim. Because we'd run out of unit, room for units. Fultus Prine. See what he has. Hopefully not a spying unit for our melee row. Then we can't play John, which is a big risk by holding off so long. But we knew he had that. Alright, so we will go for John. A Warfare does get us back our Foltus Pride. But we're close enough that this shouldn't be difficult. I guess the best thing really would be to reduce the cooldown... But they all have resupply, so it's not going to matter. We'll take the boiling oil, I guess. Let's do five damage. Fire this. This doesn't really do anything. Spawn a guy. We could go more, but that'll be it for here. That'll be GG. Another win. Duck's working out pretty well here. Uh, we do want to kind of avoid these rounds with so many units in them. With the frigates. But he was playing with spying stuff, so it's kind of hard to do. But the frigates are really what we're relying on for our crew. I'm wondering if we need more soldiers. Blaze of Glory. 
probably some kind of heavy control deck, which means we might be in a little bit of trouble. We do have a frigate, we've got ballistas. Siege support's nice to see here. I'm thinking we do probably need a couple more soldiers in this deck. John helps quite a bit, that's what we're looking for. Um, I don't know if we need Envoy, but I like it. Winch might be helpful, but we'll put it back because we can get with John anyway. If we need it, that is. So here, I think our plan will be to go for this frigate with this. There's the siege support. Oh, second frigate. This frigate should give us a whole bunch of points in the setup for crews. Now we're not we're putting this stuff melee because John Natalius goes melee, and I want to get the crew on this thing. I think we could use a couple more soldiers, honestly. Not sure what just happened. Getting slash hit. Okay, sure. Uh, let's go John and winch this. And then it'll live. And we do risk not drawing Antibius Assault then. We should probably just play Antibius Assault. And then we do have the two soldiers, so I think we'll go for the Siege Tower. We don't need to play a whole bunch of points here, but this, this should give them a bit of trouble. Then we just start stacking with Sintron on unless he goes crazy. Harpoon. Okay, I see it. I see it. It's not bad. We'll still be spawning, guys. And we'll still go with this. That's a card I want to see. Really, though, we want to stack Henselt. Henselt's one of our strongest cards. He did kill it. I, I credit you. Good job. You got rid of it. Uh, we'll boost by two again here. I think Caraballista's not a bad choice. I think he's going to pass right now. Oh, he's not. That's interesting. If he's trying to bleed us, I really don't care. We have plenty of bronze cards to play, like this winch, which will also remove his Brockvar Hunter from doing anything this round. Yeah, Karakamarine should probably be in here for a winch and this uh, siege tower. Okay, the question is, we try and force out the ice this round, or we go around three versus it. I don't want to go around three versus it, so I think we have to try and force out ice this round. To do that, we need a lot of engines. A lot of scary cards. Really, we need Hunsel here. Winch is good and all, but we need Hunsel. There he is. Okay, okay. We can pull our full to surprise. So we have some scary engines. This should be good enough. Uh, we could open with the frigate, but then it dies. What do we amphibious assault? Um, probably siege support. Right. I think we just open with the siege. Pencil will be on pride. Let's see here. This is getting slashed. That's good because then we can play Radovan. He's got the movement. Okay. We can put two engines out with this Marie with this frigate. The frigate's really gonna die, but at least we can make a soldier from the King Radovid. As in he is a soldier. He didn't remove it. We have our own movements then. Uh, we need seven damage to remove all of this. We have three engines. So if we play a siege siege engine, all this dies. And then we're in a really good spot. I think that is a good choice. Alright. We use Siege to get up quite a bit of points, and we have engines set up, so he's gonna have to start doing something. I think we have to make I think we have essentially gotten to play as iced. You can not play it if you want, but I mean it wouldn't be a bad idea to play it pretty soon. We could push with Henselt and Fultus Pride now. Or we go Radovid. I'd like Radovid for this. I want to set up War Elephant essentially here. So we'll play. I think we were the Siege support off this Amphibious Assault like we said earlier. I 
does give us a bunch of stuff. Now we can boost by one. Let's boost this. And then we can make another soldier. We can fire this. And honestly, let's just kill his guard. Let's just kill this so we can't use the order. And he's down 31. This is a very, very strong push. Um, I mean, we do want War Elephant. I think we go Radovid. We can hence out Fulter's Pride. It's not amazing right here, honestly. We could save that for round three if we need it. And then... A Siege Ladder wouldn't hurt this deck either. I like Radovid as a choice here. We're definitely doing this. Could also Radovid. I like Radovid. Let's go Radovid melee. Give him his zeal. Get another charge. Move this ranged. We spawn this. We can't play anything else ranged. Do I care? Not really. So let's see what he's got. We have plenty of charges here. We can play this war elephant pretty soon and still get its cooldown. Almost gets cooldown. That is. We get the war chariots. He is really trying to hold off on this. Ah, uh, we go Henselt here for Fulta's Pride. I think it's time. I think we have a 2-0 potentially right here. So we have Fulta's Pride. Let's see what he's... Yeah, I, I don't think he has it. And this should make him use his ice, and then we have War Elephant. Heart of Terror. Alright, he's gonna kill the War Elephant. We can pick this, what this goes on. I'm gonna pick the same thing anyway. Alrighty. Now we can go for a cooldown here. That'll be full to Spridal Fire. We can go for two more and then War Elephant. Because if he kills this soldier, then we can't put one there. So I actually need another soldier in this row. And I think we'll just fire full to Pride again. Then War Elephant next turn. And we stick this guy here. There's basically no way without ice that he can get without a uh, without blaze of glory. He's not going to get war elephant. And when he does get rid of it, we can play our other card. Interesting. So we get the plus eight here. Do this, and then we just discard this. But it doesn't matter. We're up by sixty-two. There's the ice. He's not coming back from this, though. Discard the 12. And we win by 25. Pretty close. I think we'll do... We'll do one more. We'll do one more. If this is mages, we could be in trouble because we lack the uh, <clears throat> the duels to remove stuff. So if this is mages, I think we might have a little bit of a problem. Because we'll have at least one of them boosting quite a bit. And since it could be mages, we want as much damage really as possible. And the only thing we're really missing here is siege itself. Okay, these both can thin us a card. I still, we still need to draw for siege, so we'll put this guy back. No, see, if we had Siege and his Mages, we'd just round one play it, by the way. Try and get rid of everything. There's the first one. So, again, this will be kind of hard. We can't lock it. We just have to control the ranged ones and hope that's good enough.
Let's go for our Carol Ballista. Draw. That's not Siege. That is also not Siege. Unfortunate. Two of our crew, though, so we can start Foltis Priding. And that should be what... I think that's what we'll do. We'll start Foltis Priding early. Boiling Oil to remove that. Yeah, this is probably the choice. We need to try and kill this guy. We can kill it next turn with John on Boiling Oil, so this is actually going to go away pretty quickly. That's nice. And I don't think he has a good way to deal with this unless he has his Selkirk in his hand. If he has a Selkirk in his hand, then we got a little bit punished, but it's really our only choice to try and stop this thing. I guess it might be Amphibious Assault into Selkirk. That's probably what it is. Yeah, kind of knew that was coming. Unfortunate. But not unexpected. Of our own amphibious assault. I think we try and get out a ballista. I think we try and get this going. We boiling oil kill this next turn, hopefully. The us is on Sace in his hand. He might go for that though. And then we're kind of in a really bad spot. Okay, we're we're okay. What's this one at? This one's at four, so I think we just try and stop the range student, actually. Try and stop this one. That way we hopefully stop him from getting his zeal on his alumni. Although, we can't really kill alumni either, so... Nothing here is really great. Siege does help a lot versus stuff like this in a round, longer round. That's Eastrad. None of our crew gives us immediate damage, so we can't Hensel into removal. But I think we'll just go for the War Elephant here. Winning this round is extremely important. And he could Casting Contest to kill this, which is probably what he'll do, but then he won't have the Mage ticking anymore. I guess we see Casting Contest to kill this. And then he'll stop getting the boost though, so that's fine. Obviously not the best outcome. Now we go for Hensel. Because winning this round is very, very important. None of the crew cards. I think we want to go with... This Carol Ballista. Although if it's only with Zeal, it might be better. Go with Siege Tower, honestly. That wouldn't be bad. Let's pick the Siege Tower this time. We want Henselt's boosts. We can get another Soldier next to this with Radovid. And that would be pretty good. It's Henselt boost 2 next turn. He's probably looking for Onsace. If he gets Onsace, he probably saves his round. If not, we kind of force stuff out. We'd still want a Radovid, and we want these Envoys, so we really need to pressure here. So normally I'd play these Envoys earlier to pressure, to try and, well, to try and stack for Siege. But winning this round is more important, so we just have to win it, essentially. There's a lock. It's going to be Hansel. Okay, that's not the worst thing that could have happened. Uh, Radovid's a good play here, I think. And we get plus one. We use a stockpile charge, the one that Radovid just gave us. 
And now we can boost two here. We can fire this. That does put us ahead. See what he does. For points now, we kind of have to rely on Radovid and such. Looking for his casting contest, probably. Or not casting contest, something else. So put that into his deck. Thank goodness he didn't get the same one by some magical luck. Uh, we want to save this luck. I think we're good here. I think we can force this out to win on even. And then we can start looking for our Siege next turn. Gain a charge. Fire a shot. Look for Siege. Hmm, I guess we take this. Honestly, Boiling Oil might have been a better choice. But if we're looking for Siege, we do need Siege Machines to play with it. Uh, this should be good. There's no bleeding or anything. Here's how many boosts. Let's see what he does. One damage on Radovid. He's trying to get rid of our crew. There's an alumni. That's our lock target. He's going to go for the zeal on it. Okay, we're down 10. Question is, do we lock this or not? If he's holding casting contest, locking it saves us from taking 5 damage. But he still has potentially some other cards. Can we get 10 points without doing that? Maybe. Definitely going to do this. This won't get the boost, we'll just go with this. And now we need seven points to tie eight to win. We do two charges here, doesn't really help. So we do need to lock it here. Go here. Do this shot. Okay. Let's see. What's his last card? It's a Shanny. But Shanny, we kind of are, don't actually get our round. But let's see what it is before we just say anything like that. And if it's Shanny, we force it out. And he brings back this with, like, no points on it. Which would be pretty nice. And there's the pass. So I think that's a Shanny. We went on even. Really good. We still have three leader charges. We used the ones Radovid gave us, but that was definitely worth it. We did not get the stack siege. We know we're getting War Chariot. Our deck's fairly small. That means Assault and War Chariot, I mean. We do want siege, I think. Okay. Do we push here or not? The thing is... We don't have a ton of damage. I think we at least try to stack our siege. His medit or his alumni are kind of bad. So we'll just go for this. We want to stack siege. That's a good alternative, I guess. We definitely want to get our siege to top our deck before we pass this round. Potentially we can just bleed his whole hand out too. That wouldn't be the worst thing. He's looking for one of the mages, probably looking for the Artuza Adept. Alumni is not a bad choice. But ranged only has the one. So I'm not sure about why he chose the ranged row. But he did. Uh, I think it's just salt here. I want to save that for Frigate with our Siege. So let's play a Caro Ballista. I'm not really too concerned about what we, with what we play here. I just want to try and stack again with the um, Sentry and Envoy to get our Siege round three. So probably be the R2 is adept. There it is. There's one. So this is our last turn of playing something. I still don't have Siege. I don't want to put these on top then because Siege might be closer to the top. Honestly, we might go for the cooldown. 
Because stacking the siege is very important here. There it is. We have Amphibious Assault for that guy. We can do something Zeal. Then we have to get something Bleeding, but we don't want the crew because we don't actually want to move anything. The important things we got our Siege for round 3. And we'll pass here. Oh good, the Ansace is gone. That's really nice. He does have the carryover from the chapter of Wizards, which is not fantastic, to be honest here. But we do have our Siege. We have Siege, Viva Assault, and then we'll draw into a Boiling Oil for control, and then hopefully we just gotta get a Siege Machine. And there's a whole bunch of those. Siege Engine. Boiling oil is especially nice if he opens with an alumni. Uh, we do need a siege engine here, by the way. Deck. That works. He's going to have Shanny, but he has no zeal on the alumni. So they only like three. That's all we passed there. This is the one with a big order, so I think we have to kill it. That's the one he shuffled in earlier. If we let it sit there, it'll kind of mess up our stuff. Alright, he's going to bring it back. So our, our Ballista is going to die. That's a bit annoying. Uh, Siege might not be enough here. But we'll find out in a minute. Let's see what he's got. With dignity, gestures smooth yet restrained. Twenty points. So, without damage, I think the best we are go for our frigate here. Let's see what he has. Probably casting contest. This is what a plus two, three. Oh, it's a winch. Okay. I think we might not quite, might just not make this here. Let's see. Let's go here. Fire the bombardment. Fire our shot. No, we got this. We got this because we can reduce our cooldown here. Because of the resupply. And that gives us two more. GG. Another win there. Close one for sure, though. Close one. Very close. What do I think? What would I change? Well, actually, this deck did pretty well. I was con I was a little uh, skeptical at first. I wasn't sure how well this would be. And it feels pretty weird without the Radovid um, Rafard's Vengeance. But honestly, Rafard's Vengeance... Without giving zeal, I think it's just too too risky. Like, we don't have defender. And if we do a defender, it's, like, not a guarantee anyway. But Crystal Skull, you can argue to protect it. So this is one of the big changes you could make. You could run Rafard's Vengeance. Basically, and keep Radovid's slot. But uh, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I think you could, but I wouldn't. So as far as the rest of the deck, I actually did pretty well. The two long rounds, definitely something you want to go for. You don't want to end up in a long round three where you have stuff like uh, Carrick Frigus are just spamming out units and you don't have and you run out of and you run out of space. 
So that's something to keep in mind. You definitely want two long rounds. But it worked pretty well. I think we won every game today. That usually doesn't happen when I do these, but I guess I did this time. But yeah, deck seems pretty good. I like it. Changes I would make to it. I think we cut Siege Tower. I want to try it out. I think we cut a winch. And we want the Carrick Marines back in here. I think I said this when we started the deck profiles, that this is probably better. The Carrick Marine gives you the highest point value play you can get off of the Amphibious Assault most of the time. Because it comes out as a 9 and then it boosts by 4, so it's a 13. That's pretty nice to have. Also protect stuff. And it has it's a soldier to help you get your crews. I think we're a little short on soldiers here. This should be just enough to fix it. I think I like that change. The rest of it, the seventh slot here for the um, War Chariot, I was a little bit considering, I was considering for a minute here, we wanted to run something else, but I don't think so. One other option you do have, oh, by the way, uh, Thaler's still not in a dex. One thing you could change here is definitely the Caro Ballistas. So in the five slot, you could try the new Odrin, the one-man crew, actually would have been pretty helpful in this deck sometimes. I'm not sure it's worth running, but it's a consideration and then you can always go for the Temerian Drummer if you want to have his engine value and he's a soldier. The reason why I mentioned Temerian Drummer is because in the high provision slots where like Radovid is, there is the option of going for Priscilla and Dandelion. Mostly Priscilla for the reset. I don't think it's super strong because you usually want to play a deck around Inspired if you're doing that. We don't really boost that much. But if you are going for those soldiers, the, uh, what's they called? The Temerian Drummers, you could try a Priscilla. I really... I wanted to because you can reset War Elephant, which is pretty cool, but I ended up not going for it. don't think it's quite worth it. But yeah, I think those are the changes. We want to put in the Carrick Marines, I'm pretty sure. Winch is really good, and we want Warfare cards, so I want to keep one. You could also take out the Siege Masters. They're helpful, but they're not amazing, is what I've come to decide on them. So that's pretty much what I think of here. Uh, as far as Soldiers, by the way, if you take a look at our Soldier Count... We have the Hensel, one, two, three, four. We were only having four earlier, plus these two, so five, six. Now we have eight. Eight's a much more reliable number. The frigate gives you soldiers, which is what I was counting on before, and it worked out all right, but I think we do want the other two. I think that'd be a nice option. By the way, there's always the ten slot of the Bloody Baron if you think you need the reset, which isn't a bad choice, too. So I think I should mention that. But yeah, that'll be it for this one, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Got around to the Siege deck. Got around to playing Stockpile. Don't think it's quite perfect yet, but it's the first, like, couple hours I've been playing since the patch came out, so we can't be perfect yet. But interesting deck. I think it did pretty well today. Hopefully you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.